Okay, so when you are setting yourself up to draw a bark plate, there's a few really important things that you want to know about the way that you're sitting and your relationship between you and your drawing. Uh, one thing is that when you are working sight size, that when you're facing your drawing, that you want your eyes to be hitting in the middle between what you're looking at and what you're drawing. Because what you don't want is to get a lot of distortion from being really far on one side or the other. Um, another thing that's really important um, that a lot of students aren't aware of is you want your drawing to be at your eye level. So you don't want your drawing to be really low. You don't want to be looking down. Again, this is to prevent as much distortion as possible. If your drawing's at your eye level, you're not going to get distortion by looking down or up at it. Um, it's really uncomfortable sometimes for students to have their drawings at eye level in the beginning because you have to raise your arm maybe a little higher than you're used to. Um, but even though it may feel a little different uh, to you in the beginning, it is incredibly important for accuracy that your drawing is at eye level. Also, it'll prevent you from getting like back aches and stuff because you're bending down or, or looking up. So um, when you're setting up your board, make sure that you're drawing, uh, both what you're referencing and where you are drawing are at your eye height. And because we're working sight size, we're trying to recreate this at exactly the same size that we see this, that we want our eyes splitting the difference between the two. Okay, so once we have gathered all of our materials and we have taped up our bark plate next to our um, drawing paper here, um, we want to start the drawing process. So um, the way the bark plates work is that uh, usually there are several steps in the bark plate drawings. And the idea is that they're showing you how to do something um, called blocking in that's all using lines. And then another stage usually that is rendered. Um, some of the bark plates have up to three stages in them. Um, but the way we're going to approach this particular bark plate is we are going to um, work on this stage first and when we've completed that stage, go into the second stage. So the first goal that we have in our bark plate drawing today is to transfer this information to this piece of paper here. Now, um, it can be really intimidating when you sit down before a drawing and you're like, okay, there's a hand and it's an arm and, and you know, we tend to think of things as the symbols, like we think we know what a hand is instead of looking at that specific hand. Um, and one way to start, um, you know, just start a drawing in a really abstracted way where we're not thinking about an arm but instead are trying to think about big ideas and big shapes is to use a notional space box. Now, some of you may remember uh, the term notional space box from our um, still life drawing class. Um, but, you know, each still life um, or object that you're trying to draw obviously needs a different box. So we're going to learn how to make a notional space box for this particular bark plate. Now, a notional space box is just a fancy word for um, how much space is this drawing take up. And if we were to box this drawing in, what would that box look like? So the way we're going to do that is we are going to find the furthest leftmost point, which in this case is the elbow here, the furthest rightmost point, which is this knuckle here, the furthest topmost point, which is the top of the arm here, and the bottommost point, which is the very bottom of his fist here. Now, once we've discovered the these four outermost points, what we can do is we can draw vertical lines through the furthest leftmost point. Now I'm going to darken this quite a bit. In your own drawings at home, make sure to draw nice and light. Because I'm doing this as a demonstration and this is a video, I'm going to darken my lines quite a bit. But again, you want nice light lines, nice barely visible lines. Um, so I'm putting vertical lines, and again, mine are heavy because this is a demonstration, and horizontal lines through the top and bottom most parts. So you can see what I've created here is 
a rectangle. It's a box. And this is called our notional space box. This is the box that will completely encompass our drawing. Now, um, today we're going to be working site size. And what that means is that we're going to be drawing this drawing at exactly the same size over here as we're observing it. Um, there's a lot of reasons to do that, and we'll get into those throughout the course. Um, but because we're working site size, because we want our drawing to be exactly the same size over here as it is over here, what we're going to do is we're going to use our skewer as a tool to help us measure. And what we're going to do is we're going to um, find the height of our box from top to bottom, and then I'm going to draw that over here, and I'm just going to make a mark for the top in the bottom of my box, and I'm going to find the width of my box. Now, it's really important that we always double check our measurements. Measuring is its own skill. And so the first thing I'm going to do before I actually draw my box over here is make sure that these measurements are correct. So I'm just going to double check. And one thing I realized is that um, if I draw them here, that my drawing is going to be a little higher on this side than it is over here. And I want them to be close to the same height as I can get them. So even though this measurement is accurate, what I'm going to do is lower it just a little bit. And again, I'm going to try to make my marks really dark so that you can make sure to see them in the camera. When we're drawing, because we are always double checking measurements and moving things around, we want to make sure that we're, we're drawing as lightly as possible so that you couldn't even see it in the camera um, in your own drawings at home. Um, so we have our height, our width. Because I moved this down a little bit, I'm just going to double check it again. It never hurts to check your measurements. Okay, so I'm now pretty satisfied with my width and my height, and now my last step to make my notional space box is to draw horizontal lines through the top and bottom and vertical lines through the left and right sides. Now, you'll notice that I'm freehand drawing my lines. There's um, a lot of different thoughts about um, training people in this skill-based method. Um, one I thought is that um, you should always draw straight lines freehand, just as straight as you can make them, because then you'll learn how to make straight lines. The other school of thought is that it's already so hard to learn how to draw in this technical way that any tool available to you, such as a ruler or using my skewer as a straight edge, um, should be used to help make those straight lines. Um, you know, I say it's up to you, whatever your preference is. If you are really nervous about not having perfectly straight lines, use, use the straight edge. If you want to really practice your skill of drawing straight lines, um, you know, do them freehand. Um, just try to make them as straight as you can, and uh, you know if you keep practicing, then eventually your lines will get more and more straight. Um, okay, so uh, we have now created on our drawings our notional space box. We found it on our original, and because we're working site size, which means we're making our final drawing the same size as our original reference, um, we have made a box that is exactly this size over here. And this is going to set our proportions for our entire drawing today. So um, that is essentially what a notional space box is in our first step in our drawing process.